Sam alaikum, Abiha, Hassan, how are you? Wa alaikum, Sam, good, yourself? Good, thank you, good, thank you. How, how's everything going, how are the kids? Kids are doing well, um, they're busy. It's, uh, of course, uh, um, well, they're busy with their school, their activities and everything, but they're doing well, yeah. Good. And how are you guys doing? Good, pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, um, I guess when you get busy with activities, it's just the mundane day to day, I guess. So get used to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and, and you know, time, it takes time, but I guess, yeah, you know, as they say, been, time heals all wounds. But this was obviously something. It's almost uh, four months. So, I mean, it, yes, time seems like uh, it's healing, but I don't think it heals. <laughs> It, you you learn how to how to cope with it. Yes, you learn how to cope. You learn how to cope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, so I, I don't know how to start. I don't know what questions to ask because I can't even imagine. It's it's um it's an experience. I guess you never nobody wants to ever experience, but but you have, and you're brave enough, both of you, that you want to come here and share. So you can help other people, which is so important, right? It is. It so, certainly is, and uh, and I think uh, that's the main purpose of this too, right? Um, I, what, when I went through this, I I encountered so many people that had gone through this and didn't even I didn't even know they that that they that happened to them, and they were they were it's a taboo subject, right? Uh, um, in in any culture, it's a taboo subject to be honest. And they don't really talk about it or about their feelings. And it's such a huge, huge life altering experience that, uh, that needs to be discussed. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, definitely an isolating experience, right? You feel isolated. Um, but the more you start talking to people, the more others have gone through it. It's just not something that's shared. So yeah, but, it's not. I guess, um, you know, like the culture says, oh, don't talk about it because the more you bring it up, the more it's going to hurt them. And, and rightfully so. Some, some people want to kind of block it. So everybody processes grief differently. differently. Yeah. And, um, and it's hard. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a loss is a loss is a loss, right? And, um, and it's hard. And everybody grieves differently. And their coping mechanisms are different. Um, yeah. But a lot of people have that good support system. And right. That's what matters. So like the support system where, you know, they can gauge, not to say they can gauge a hug, like they can, they can feel it. Okay. A hug is needed or a touch is needed or a coffee, like a cup of coffee is needed. Mm -hmm. And that kind of support system is huge. And, and so uh, like, I don't mean to rehash everything, but walk me through it. What happened? So, um, well, we, it was August 18th um, morning. We had an ultrasound appointment. I was being monitored um, on a regular basis because generally, um, I, I generally have high risk pregnancies. Um, and um, I was 32 weeks. And um, that morning um, when I went to the ultrasound, Hassan was with me, it was um, special permission because again, there's COVID times, right? Mm -hmm. So special permission given to him to uh, come along and uh, we had to have, a, have, an, have a C-section that day and it just, fortunately she didn't survive. So we had a baby girl named Jenna, Jenna Kulsun Zebi. She was gorgeous. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so after that uh, we were, Sent to the bereavement room, um, and uh, as do you want to take over? And yeah, sure. So um, a lot of this was uh, it mirrored a lot like our third daughter, Myra. So uh, Myra was born at 32 weeks uh, to the day, um, ICU for two months. Um, almost mirrored exactly the same thing. The only difference was. Uh, Jenna didn't survive and Myra did. So the difference with Myra was um, she took her first breath, then didn't breathe. They had to resuscitate her and it worked with her. With, with Jenna, it just didn't. So 
um, yeah, is what it is. Uh, Abia has had like the, like a lot of high risk pregnancies, I'd say. Um, but the difference was this time, I think, because we were working from home. Like this is probably the smoothest pregnancy. It was yes, right. It, everything was on point. I, I, I know her gynecologist would send her to these appointments just because she's had high risk pregnancies before, but there was nothing abnormal right it was like just too was good like, to be true let's just say that <laughs> and uh, until um the end um i was going through um uh, early signs of labor and therefore they had to uh, do a c-section and um so i i was quite surprised actually i didn't expect the the process would go in that way like when you lose somebody you you don't know what to expect right and uh at the hospital i mean the system is great i uh, they they let me spend time with her and uh i had her for 21 hours actually <laughs> wow until we had to take her um for her burial and uh it it was interesting that uh i get to spend time with her i get to um i guess make those memories with her there so yeah, it was very yeah. important for me. I, I, I mean, I've been following your, your journey yes. and I've been seeing these beautiful pictures that you've taken with her. And, and I mean, you can, you know, th this is something that you can, her life cherish, um, yeah. you know, but like, go like towards, so you knew always that um, you were always a high risk. So there was a little bit of like, maybe a little bit, I would think, fear inside hoping and praying all, as well all the other ones went like they're high risk but all of them went smoothly like they're high risk but um so i don't i don't know how to explain it it's just like i never so knowing me um i'm i'm a really positive person like i see half a glass half full all the time annoyingly so <laughs> <laughs> not so much for husband but <laughs> but uh, yeah, all husbands think like that but that's okay <laughs> we so, love you that's what matters <laughs> exactly. so it i never really think that something like this would happen to us or i always find the positivity out of everything every situation so it, it was it was some let's just say i was shaken by by the experience because i didn't expect it i um like the feelings that you go through it's unreal i, I thought i, I would I, push I, I, I can i can i can't even say i can imagine because i can't mm -hmm. because i no matter how high risk the pregnancy is you know you're still hoping to bring that baby home right mm -hmm. exactly you never ex like even though a part of you is thinking it might not happen but you're still you're still trying so hard. Oh my God, that happen. thought doesn't even come, honestly speaking. So, <laughs> yeah. She gets classified in high risk because um, she dilates early, right? Other than that, Isla came out, our first daughter came out at 40 weeks. Our son was the smoothest pregnancy. 37, right? 37 and a half. And they took him out early. Yeah. So um, That was a planned C-section. Planned C-section, 37 and a half, smooth. Myra was the one hiccup that we had. And then obviously Jenna. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's high risk, but I, so so it never crossed my mind. Like maybe with 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 Myra, I'm like, what are the odds this happens twice, right? Like hers was, I chalked her up as an anomaly, and I'm like, it is what it is. But Allah has his reasons, right? Like so, we just got to figure out what that is. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, so like as we all know, right? Like we all have a purpose in life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right and um through our grief through our successes through our experiences we have a responsibility that we have a purpose and our, so everybody's purpose is different mm -hmm. and i mean i think that by you being here right now um and sharing this is giving so many parents that voice and 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 showing them the support system that there is within within family or even community right so hassan like i, I like as a father because i know all the attention goes straight to the mom and it does right yep. it does and and a part of it is because 
she's held the baby inside of her she's nourished her she's right. the closest thing to the baby at that time so and and the everything physiologically mentally emotionally the the woman does go through or the mother does go through right. her fair share but like i i can i i know for a fact that you would have gone through a lot as well because and yeah. that, and that's what i need to hear like i like i think people especially fathers mm -hmm. right if you're like what did you go through and like what were your emotions at that time right so i i'll, I'll give you a, i'll give you a perspective right like uh i find uh like most men i'll internalize more than that Abia shares a lot more than I would ever share. Uh, she shared more, wants to constantly talk about it with her friends, whereas with mine, I don't. Uh, we had our conversation, it was simple, straight, and then I want to talk about anything but, right? Uh, Abia wants to. Those 21 hours that Abia spent in that room with, with Jenna, I would have avoided that with my life. I regret it to this day. I wouldn't have done it. I would not have done it. I did that because she would not have done it if I didn't do it. So, because when I said I didn't want to do it, she said, well, you know, I, I, then I don't want to do it. And I'm like, I know I take that. So I understand we have two different grief streams, right? Where yeah. we're separated. Um, her connection to Jenna was immediate. Um, mine is more once they're born, right? Like that's that connection. Yeah, and, and I think all, I, I mean, we, mashallah, we have five. Mm -hmm. Um, we've gone through four pregnancies, but I think it was the same thing with Ali. Like any time during the pregnancy, I would talk to him about anything, and I could tell from his face and his energy that he's just kind of going with the flow. Oh, I'm so excited! He'd be like, "Yeah, yeah." But I think his connection came. It's instant once it's the instant. kid is born, and the mother, it's right away. You feel, you feel the child move. You feel every connection. Your hormones are connected. Everything is connected, right? There's a reason for it, right? Uh, so whereas Abia felt all that for me it was different it just was yeah. um, and then where I can say that it it crosses all cultures most of the men in, in the grief counseling that we have gone through it's, it's all internalized it's 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 the women that feel the constant need to to talk the men don't we 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 chime in we're there to support right but like our, our grief process is different it, it just is um, the other thing I've noticed is, and, I, and I'll go by cultures and that, I, I feel bad because at least we had religion to fall back on. They, a lot of people don't. They have anger. They don't feel that connection. They, they, they question everything. They had a lot more ha anger. And I don't think that ever went through us. Like, I, I never felt anger. Uh, and, for me, and it's was it because, well, it, I, I'm, I'm sure that has to do with your level of submission, right? Yep, yeah, hundred percent. Absolutely. This is this this is a, this is a test, right, for us. Uh, there's got to be a meaning. Now it's finding that meaning. Now whether finding that meaning is uh, to me finding that meaning is whatever appeases you, whatever puts you at ease, is what I'm going to find that meaning in. Because it's going to be different for why I think. Yeah, right? and and I guess um, the biggest test in all of this, I find, like, um, is that obviously she came and she left, mm -hmm. right? Um, but you both are still here yeah. and, and to try to support each other and respect each other's grieving process mm -hmm. is, and, and getting through that initial stage of it. So, and then kind of, you know, so being in sync, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it, that, that might, that probably is one of the hardest things, right? Because you don't want to completely disconnect. 100%. Absolutely. And, and I think it's very important um, for anyone that might, um, I, I wouldn't wish upon anyone uh, this experience, but if they are going through this experience, the one thing that I would definitely say is stay connected to your partner because that's very important, regardless of uh, uh, male or female, like husband and wife need to be in this together. Um, and understand each other's uh, way of grieving too, right? I mean, it, uh, husband's different, I'm different, but we support each other, or at least I think I support. No, you do. You do. <laughs> but and, and that's important. Where you mean like you're constantly there and you're constantly communicating. It's also she's giving me my space, right? Where I didn't. Yeah. Want it. Um, yeah. Like you can be in each other's space too much because it's like, so it's it's just knowing the because you it's knowing the cl clues and the the cues that okay. 
some space is required. And exactly. if, if one of or the other is not kind of immediately res coming to my rescue, res you know, or responding to me, is because they, you need to un understand what I'm going through, he's going through as well. Right. And of course, it's both ways, right? Yeah. So um, your family was, I, I, I guess, was instrumental in, in support, right? Um, we have um, two different perspectives on that, yeah. to be honest. We have okay. two very different, distinct perspectives. So, um, and can, can I just touch on one point? Like sure. a lot of these things, like communication, it's the same as in a marriage, right? If you don't communicate out, no matter how awkward it is, and, and I'll give you a simple example, right? Abia, for her, going to the Kabrustan every day was important, right? Especially in the summer months. Now it, it's, it's tapered off. I went going through the motions for a long time. And then eventually I told everybody, I'm like, you know what? I feel worse when I go and I don't want to. I feel like I'm being forced to go, right? So if I didn't communicate that and then eventually she started going alone and then I picked the days I wanted to go. So if I'm, I'm out, like it's, it's about a 40 minute drive from our house, when, whenever we're out west, I do drop by, right? Like, and it's on me. If, I, if I'm alone, I've gone there alone, right? But it's on my thing. So at least she understood that. But I'm like, at first I felt like it was being forced and she wanted it to be that family environment. And I get that because the kids enjoy going there. But then I didn't enjoy going with the kids. I'll be honest. Like, cause then I feel like they're taking away my time that I would have had with Jenna because I'm focused on Myra running off, my son being loud, <laughs> uh, you know, things like that. Right. So it, you have it, to be I a dad, it. right. And then you can, and, and I am like, I, I, like, I can't understand because, um, you know, I think uh, uh, when when Ali visits his mom, right. um, there are times I think he just want to go alone. He just right. he just don't want to be. He just don't does not want anybody there. Right. And I think it's just because you want to have that one on one, right? Exactly. And 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 again, it's everybody grieves differently, right? Exactly. exactly. So and everybody wants to connect differently. And and it's so amazing that Alhamdulillah, you guys are able. You're understanding each other's. I would almost say grieving love language, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right. Like you can understand each other, uh, so you know what she needs, and she knows what you need. Agreed. And of course, there will be bumps on the way. Right? Always, yeah. um, always. But if you know at the end of the day that you both are going to end up at the same place, I yep. think that's that's key. Yeah. That's key. And over time, you learn the triggers, right? I. I sorting <laughs> and getting that a lot triggers her, and it's different for me, right? Uh, yeah. Not a lot will trigger me, but like, what triggers me is her reaction sometimes, right? Like that, that'll be mine, right? That are, I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have said that, or you know, I didn't think of that, so. Yeah, there's a lot of those that I didn't think of how it connected and it did connect. And so it's, it's, it's live and learn type scenario. It's like having a child, right? Having your first Yeah, child. yeah. Absolutely. You make so many mistakes. Um, you, you know, you do, you, you change so many routines. Um, mm -hmm. You change so many, so like if the baby's on a formula, you it's not like instantly you exactly. have so, so many food so it's learn with stages. Learning as you're going, yeah. how to uh, parent a lost child, I guess, yeah. right? So it's it's going to take time a little bit, and time is uh, time is what you need. Right? Yeah. So um, let let let's get back to family. So I'll I'll give you my perspective. Okay? Sure. So. We, are, we already know, like, it's, for me, it's important, like, it, it, culturally, this is a very taboo subject. Now, whether it's because it's awkwardness, whether, you know, I, I've seen a lot of women get blamed for a lot of these things, for whatever odd reason, right? Uh, there's a lot of cultural intricacies there, right? So I'll tell you, the perspective that I have is the people that were closest here experiencing it with you, which was my family, have a completely different take than Abia's family. Completely different take. Mm -hmm. And that's because they're not here. Yeah. Right? And usually her parents would be here. COVID caused issues. They're now in Saskatoon. So, uh, you know, they, it, they're, they're not here. So when you're observing this from a distance, they felt more along the lines of, okay, you know, you've grieved, now you gotta move on. Or you gotta forget about this. Or you are sharing too much. Or you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do You know that. how much I share. So. <laughs> right? So, and I can see that because they're not getting a holistic view of this, right? They're getting the isolated view of what a post is, of what her moment is when she's writing that, as opposed to her day-to-day. -day. Yeah. Whereas, 
and and it's not like she's feeling like that all day exactly um, but she might have like that half an hour moment of just okay i need to do this i need to write i need to you yeah. know because in a in a 24 hour day you have to make a little bit of time because you can go from grieving the whole day and then it just reduces slowly so sure. and and i guess it's again parent seeing their child right yeah yeah and that and that's the conversation so I'll tell you one of the things. So then I, I, I saw that they were, they were sending her in a more depressive state, right? Uh, they went from calls multiple times a day to once a week, once every two weeks. Now, whether that's a conversation that they're, they don't know what to talk about or they feel uncomfortable, but it was like, you could see that distance growing, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas my family was more here so they could drop by, they could do things within limits because we, 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 fell into that red zone so we can do that but I mean when they were when you're in the in normal COVID zones they would they would drop by right um and then her siblings same thing right different conversations uh you got to move on you got you can't be depressed all the time it was more instructional uh we don't first thing was you don't share this kind of information that was the first first thing right we don't we we don't we don't do that and that was, a, that was something I wasn't expecting from my family because I didn't think that they would think that way. Um, and uh, they're pretty liberal, they're, right? They're, in they're thought, they're, they're, they're not very conservative in thought. So I would uh, it shocked me too, to be honest. Yeah. So it, 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 it definitely brought me to that I couldn't speak to my siblings or my, my parents about Jenna openly anymore. And I still don't actually. Um, I try to avoid the subject because it, it hurts them or it, uh, it actually... Um, makes the conversation awkward. Awkward, very awkward. So it, I think again, right? Like um, it, it has to do with culture, and I think it's also the fact that you know, don't be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Don't show that side of you. You're strong. Yeah. You need to move on. You have three other children. You think about them. You know, and and I think that's what it is. And 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 they mean well. There's <laughs> love there too. Yeah. And and I think that. Like if, I don't know, if one of my kids is going through something, I'm like, okay, come on, get it over with, finish, right? Get up, move on. Okay, you fell, you scraped, we cleaned it, yeah. move on. And I think that's what, it, that's what the mindset is a little bit, right? To be tough and, and you know, just, yeah. And, and I guess because it's not something that they've experienced it as well, right? So they feel they want to protect you. They want you to not suffer or not hurt and, this is the way they present their support system. So you're absolutely you know. right. You, you touched on it. That's exactly it. So I, I had a quasi intervention with that. Right. And I said, listen, if you wanted a glimpse and, and I'm very open with my father-in-law, right. I actually get along with him better than my dad, to be honest. Cause he's <laughs> a lot more. Are you sure you want to be, it may have that on record. <laughs> yeah, that, that's all right. My dad can hear it. It's, he probably knows already his job's to be strict. My, like my father-in-law's not right. So, uh, so I had an open conversation with them, right? And I told them, listen, I go, I go, for every reason that you want to protect her, you're giving her more reason to fall into depression. If she doesn't feel that she can talk to you or if she has support, I go, then you're putting her in the state you don't want her to be in, right? And then what I told them was, if you wanted a glimpse of what it was, of what it truly was, you could have just called me. You could have just called me. I could have given you that glimpse, right? And he told me two things. So you touched upon it first. He goes, well, I see my daughter suffering. So that's why I did it. I go, yeah, I totally get where you're coming from. Never said it was coming from a bad intent or a bad place. That's absolutely not what I thought. It's just the way you're going about it is the old way. And then you're not, you're, you're not open to change. Like the, the, our world has changed. The world has gotten smaller. Uh, we share more on social media. Like the, this isn't a generation that understands that, right? If you couldn't even talk to it face to face, imagine if you're just blasting it out on social media. Yeah. That's not something I would do. That's something that she does, <laughs> yeah. which is fine. Right? And, it's her way. It's and, her therapy. And I guess for Abiha, like what I'm sensing is more like, okay, I lost my child and I now I'm losing my family because I can't even talk to them. Right. Exactly. And they don't understand me. They don't get me. And so, you know, it's, it's hard. And, but I think that it's hard for your parents too, right? A, they're sitting right. so far away. And, and, and I know you know that, right? And yeah. We all know our parents love us no matter what. Like, I, I mean, there's no question about that. But I think everybody's um, 
uh, coping mechanism is different. Exactly. Right. There you need and, 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 and literally that's what it is. And, and you know what? We've, our generation, I find, has uh, been that extremely progressive towards many, in, and many different ways. We've lost a lot of values mm -hmm. while progressing. 100% I say that all the time. But I think that uh, the mindsets have changed a lot, right? Right. So, so um, like everything, uh, grieving has changed. Um, you know, submission to Allah has changed. Yeah, changed. And I'm not saying that they're not religious, but I think it's just the mindset, right? So, so from the community, like um, when you were going through, you have family supporting you and everything. Um, what kind of resources were there for you from within the community or were they, or what was there not, right? I'll tell you community wise, in terms of helping us with uh, Jenna's burial and that, like Kashif, who's our president at our Imam, I, I gotta tell you, like, I, I can't thank him enough. I'll tell you, I'll tell you why, right? So we were struggling with like that day that we had Jenna, then we knew we, we had to do the burial and we had to do it quickly, right? Abia's biggest fear was she didn't want to give Jenna over to the morgue. Didn't want it, right? Um, Kashif got everything arranged. And now, mind you, like, these are weekdays, right? Like, I mean, he's working, right? Like, like everyone else, he's got a family, three young kids, uh, I think two or three young kids, right? And he's working, took his time out of the day. I, we got him, we got to hand Jenna when our time was up directly to him. They took her to the Imam Bara, did the ghusl, got everything ready, and we met them at the at the Kabristan. Like, I mean, I, I, I don't think that could have gone any smoother. And for Rabia, that was the best thing ever, right? She thought she was going to miss the funeral. She had, so this, this is actually the funny <laughs> part, right? So she's gone through three C-sections before, so she knew what the doctors would look for to be able to release her. She literally got out the next day, right? Like, so she had the operation. Uh, got out the next morning and got to, to, to his funeral, which she didn't think she was going to get to do. So I think in that type of community support, it was fantastic. Um, I, I'll let you talk about the, the lady that actually did the... Yeah, no... Uh, the, the way she texted you. Yeah, like, no, so they, they were very, very um, good to me because the, the lady that helped out with the whistle and everything, she reached out to me and she was... She was that was very sweet of her to say that she's in my arms right now, so don't worry. Um, and it's it just puts you at ease, right? Like that that I gave my baby, and now I don't know what's happening, but but I got that text. It it felt it made me feel really good, um, or I'm not good in the sense that it it put me at ease. That okay, yes, it's she's secured, and then I I was able to go see her at the funeral, so which which also. Um, was a huge plus because again i wasn't expecting to be out of the hospital within 24 hours um to be honest but i got out like within 21 hours um and uh i was released and i was able to attend the funeral and be there before they um buried her and uh, so that was that was something i really appreciated as far as community is concerned oh my god the the blessings i should i it's hard to even count because there's so many. Um, so many were, people reached out. They were so nice. Everybody reached out. And and one thing I have to say, and this is because uh, they reached out because I actually let people know. Yeah. And, and honestly, if I didn't let someone know or let my community know, they wouldn't have come out. And they, they mean well. Everybody means well. Um, and the fact that they were calling me constantly, attending to me, it made my grieving process a lot easier than, than what it would have been. I would have been isolated alone in that room um, with Jenna. I was actually on the calls constantly while I was with Jenna um, from different people. And I was attending those calls. And I took that upon myself to attend those calls because it, was, it made it easier for me to talk um about jenna and uh, and it was a grieving process right and the process helped me get out of that isolation of like oh I'm, i just lost my baby i mean some people take a little bit of time and then you know after the burial and everything but i think what also happens is it's 
like they wait to get a clue. You know, they don't want to overstep. So yeah. I, I think there are so many people around us who are so compassionate and they're so helpful and they want to be there. It's not they feel they have to be there. Um, and I think the only thing that kind of, and, and, and that's where the void is that they don't know if they're overstepping and then Absolutely. the grieving parents don't know how to tell them to. So it's that keeping those communications and, and for everybody is different again, right? So some okay. grieve um, in, in kind of a little bit of an isolation, they feel like they need to process it on their own in some friends and people around. And that was, it's all right. Yeah, that was more Hassan because he wanted to process I didn't, it. I didn't take any calls. I didn't want to take any calls. I wanted space and yeah, it's different, right? And like you said, it, it's, not, it's not even along gender lines. It, it's literally along people and how you process things. Right? Yeah, yeah. So you, you hit it right yeah. on the nose. Like that's I exactly needed to it. make sure that I process and flow all the resources. She took through. every single call. And then some, some of the calls I got to tell you, and especially like where the gap is between, I'd say the auntie and uncles and us, like um, <laughs> in terms of what's acceptable conversation. Like we had some, we had some interesting comments. We had some interesting comments, right? And 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 that's where I think, and here's the here's the thing, right? And, and I think it's for us to bridge those gaps of where it's okay yeah. to say things, right? And and that whereas other people took it so offensive, I'm like, no, I'm like, you got to remember where they're coming from yeah. and, and 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 what they're trying to say, right? Exactly. And, and what their generation went. And with. and it's the intention, right? Like, that's what that's what we're taught from from the beginning. Every it's the intention, and if you it's just people just you know they just don't know how to and but you you should always focus on the intention and if it's if you know it's coming from a good place then yeah. you're able to you're, you're more forgiving and more um accepting correct and 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 i i think that's that those are the ba like those are those those boundaries that we got to break right like because they grew up with a certain culture yeah and things that they say reflect that right and it's the same thing for us I, how many people like we, when we first started this conversation, how many people that came out that this happened to, I had no clue. There's people that I meet on a regular, whether we're watching a sporting event or something, I had no idea they went through the same thing. Because yeah. for them, they kept it just to themselves. They did the burial and that was it. And it was done, right? So everyone has their process that's different. Everyone has their thing that where their comfort level is different. I didn't know how I was gonna tell my neighbors. I mean, we took walks all summer. All of them know our kids uh, to the point where like, you know, they're like, oh, the fourth is coming, the fourth is coming. And I'm like, what, what the hell do you tell them? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I think these communication lines, like this needs to be open. I had no idea this many people went through it. And whether you want to share or not, that's up to you. Yeah. But I think there should be a platform more available for this. Yeah. Like uh, and, Roger. And I think that there are a lot of platforms available for moms. And for for husband or like uh, moms and dads together, yeah. but maybe like how did you feel about the support system or support groups for just dads? Like there isn't. You, yeah, there isn't. I, I I found like every research I did in terms of like finding uh, groups, uh, the men have like next to nothing, right? Like yeah. uh, in terms of documentation and anything else, is until you let the mommy's group, even the other couples group. I mean. I mean, when we, we when we're actually done, we're done. accepted, um, so so we're the type of people, or I'm the type of person that accept every and any and every resource that's available because I need to make sure that I don't go into postpartum or um, because that's going to affect my family. I'm I'm yeah. So you're being like super proactive, right? Exactly. You're exactly. being a warrior mom. Yeah. <laughs> in a way. Yeah. Yeah. In 100%. a way. So we did accept um, uh, therapy. Uh, sessions mm -hmm. and uh, that is offered through the hospital so if uh, if anything um, if someone is going through this process reach out to your hospital or your um, caregiver and then um, ask for it um, so they offered us an eight-week program mm -hmm. with couples therapy and uh, individual as well um, and uh, we went through those that process, and uh, it was it was quite helpful because there there were topics that we weren't ready to talk about, or we wouldn't even think about talking about it. But in the back, we were thinking of. So um, it's it's a good point to start a discussion within the two of you. 
So um, I have a question there. So do you think that going, taking that or resource um, and going for those therapies, did you, did you, do you both think that it helped you both understand each other's grieving process as well? Did, or? Absolutely. 100%. Absolutely. So, yeah. so, so essentially by going to, uh, for therapy together and individually, mm -hmm. it kind of kept your marriage together, right? Oh, I, I, 100%. Absolutely. I'll tell you right off the bat, it set the lines, right? Like, yeah. uh, like it, had I had that before, had I known that, like, I mean, everything happened in slow motion, but so fast at the same yeah. time, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I wouldn't have gone in that room. I wouldn't have gone in that room. I think that set me back for me, right? And I, I think if I had done that at the time without going through it and her understanding that there are two different grieving processes for both of us, I think she would have resented it. So it's just hearing those words from other people of saying, no, your path is yours. You feel you have nothing to feel guilty about. If you mm -hmm. feel like doing this, you do it. Right. And then you have that safe environment to be able to share. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think a lot yeah. of times, um, and I mean, I've, I've seen this and I'm, I don't know if you've seen this as well, but I've, I've noticed that when, when, when a child passes, there is a, a slight level of disconnection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Between, between you both, like between the husband and the wife of course. or the mother and the father, like they're, they, they disconnect on both those levels a little bit. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, because, and, and I think that this is why the support system, uh, whether it's from your family or, uh, whether it is from support groups around you and, and everything and anything that you can take. And, and Abiha, like, I think, you did the right thing. You were not going to take a single, a, not even a 1% chance of going down that spiral because you no. knew that if you did, it would affect you as a family unit because it's not only you who's going through this, it's you going through this, it's Hassan going through this, it's you both going through this as, as a uh, husband and wife and as parents to the children and thereby the children will go through this, right? 100%. And, and children feel the energy. Like you can put on whatever face you want to put on, but they feel it. the energy, right? Like that. 100%. And then they have their own grieving little process too. Like what I didn't realize is just how much they were affected by it, right? Because they had expectations, right? So they had thoughts, uh, 12, 10. I mean, they're old enough to process information, right? Myra may be a little less, but even she had it because <laughs> she had expectations, right? Like she was going to be a big sister. So there were things that you had to walk people through. Uh, they had a few therapy sessions themselves, right, to be able to share. Um, yeah, it's, it, you know, if I could say one thing that I think was missing, and honest to God, it, it, it's within our own, it's within our own community, right? For me, is I would have loved to have that kind of open platform to share within our open community. I'll give you the reasons why. Like I said, the other couples that were there, as nice as they were, and none of them were really religious. None of them, like, uh, angry. Um, none of them saw a different purpose uh, other couldn't. than this was vengeful. I couldn't connect to that yeah, at all. Relate. I could connect to the other feelings they had where the, the man wanted the distance because they did the same thing I did. I went to go see friends. I didn't talk about it. I talked to my, like, Hasnan. I talked to, like, these people. And our talks would be, first five minutes, I went through it. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. And then... That's it. We don't talk about it. We talk about other things. Whereas Abia's conversations would be hours long, but specifically about this. And she would, she would almost not like it when they wouldn't talk about it, right? When they would avoid the conversation. So I would have loved it because I would have loved that, that religious aspect to be brought into that. And we, we, we understand a lot of the things we try to normalize it, but I would have loved to have talked about things like this. Yeah. Like, talked I mean, about these and stuff. The, just hearing somebody that, um, you know, having the same uh, spiritual perspective or religious right. perspective. Right. I think that that does, and because that's what we fall back on, right? Right. right. That is that is our that is our main support system, right? Right. And and I can like by the way I'm talking to you and this feeling that I'm getting is, I think the, what what has helped you guys through a lot is the submission. It's oh, the number course. one thing. I don't think I would have gotten through this, or else tell me this: How do you justify it? How does it make any sense? Yeah. You tell me how it makes sense. How do you lose a child where it makes sense if there is no submission to God, if there is no higher purpose? There has to be a purpose. There's something that we need to realign. Mm -hmm. And then it's, like I said, it's, it's what makes sense to you. So was it that we weren't paying enough attention, we're, we're working too much, 
because it, it's happened during the pandemic, right? I've had my kids come up to me and go, hey, listen, you told me an hour ago you were done, right? Or you told me this, right? But you're like, just one more thing because your desk is always there and you're just constantly there, right? Yeah. So maybe I wasn't paying attention enough. So maybe it's realignment to that. Maybe there's another thing. I, it could be a million different things. It's it whatever makes sense to you, right? And I guess it could also be the fact that you will you realize the 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 part that's missing, right? Right. And you might be like you're maybe you're strong enough that you've gone through this, but some people might not be. And just by providing that support system to them, um, yeah. I think that will help save a lot of families too right absolutely I agree. because what ends up happening is just because you don't find that little bit of a support system mm -hmm. things start snowballing and oh, then exactly all right. you know is everything has you know like it's just all over the place you're 100 percent right and then I families get affected by this and so if you hold another dad's hand right and even if it's like hey man let's go and play golf that's our grieving right. process Right. It doesn't have to be in a room, in a circle, chairs, everybody's sitting and talking about their okay. feelings, but just knowing, okay, he, like, it's just... If you like, want, it's there, right? If you want to talk, it's there, absolutely. you have the support. What, what, you, what you said is, right, like, I find, so if we gave them a platform for people that would be able to share, and then you, 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 whether you want to talk about it through religious angles, or they understand the way you were brought up, right? They understand that there are certain things you say, certain things you don't. If you heard the way people, some people, their triggers and the way they would react to like their so, parents so, and that, we would never very, do it, right? Something very small um, that, uh, that I couldn't relate to was um, they, they would see a, a baby, uh, someone mm -hmm. having a baby or someone, um, just having a baby and they're sending their newborn pictures, they would get a trigger out of that. To me, I would be like, oh my God, this is so cute. I love it. And and I was so happy to see it. And I wanted to see Speaking it because- culture, you had that same thing. Exactly. Some people were afraid to, to share their news with us, right? Like they had a baby. Yeah. But there's one that had, I think so one of our best I, I really appreciate one person that had a baby um, right the day after Jenna actually. And um, she was willing to share her milestones with, uh, with me. And I really appreciate that because you know that fear of like, oh, how will she see it? And if she even wants to see it, right? That's also there. Um, so it's, it's one of those things, like I really appreciate that she did that and uh, just continuing to do that as I love it. And I didn't feel any, envy or jealousy out of that i just felt i just felt connected yeah. that oh my god this would be my jenna just like that yeah yeah and 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 i think um that's why we have like a little bit of a head start to the to the process yeah. right because Absolutely. we and 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 that's what it is and 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 i think that your purpose could just be not to just completely submit yourself just to this, but of course, by, by being a husband, wife together and parents together and raising these beautiful kids, healthy, beautiful children that, you know, God has given you it to raise anyways. If you do a little something for the people who are out there, then I guess Je Jenna's purpose is served. You're right. Yeah. We, we looked at it through a lot of different angles, right? So the communication, like I was telling you, like, if you don't get that counseling and so I'll tell you where a lot of friction, right? You, you hit it right away. There's friction right out the front, right? If you, did, if someone didn't normalize that for us, that, Hey, you don't have to feel guilty for not wanting to do this, or you didn't want to, I wouldn't understand her and she wouldn't understand me. And then that, that snowballs, right? Oh my God. Because that, that, that feeling is you're, you're trying to get, I was trying to get space. She's trying to give me no space, <laughs> right? Like that's innately, that's the way it goes. And that's, that's in what, our house all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but that's exactly it, right? But, and, and, and that's what it is. And then that just snowballs, right? And then it's just because you're going through, but the minute someone said, hey, this is normal. This is what normally happens. You would process it this way and she would process it that way. And neither of you need to feel guilty about doing it to the other. Oh my God, it just, like the, the pressure just felt off, right? Yeah, it's like the like load is off. Oh my God. I don't have to pretend anymore. I don't, exactly. need, I, I don't need to pretend for the world, for my wife, for exactly. my children. Thank you. Exactly, yeah. right? So I think that that was the number one key. That, like, that being in the first few days. It just hit it right it, away. It, it just, it set the tone for but, the rest of the But day. one thing, I think the first call we got was, 
the first call we got from the therapist was uh, write down your expectations and share yeah. it. And that was very helpful because um, the therapist said that, okay, once you write it down, not everything will be completed, but the expectations are listed. And whenever the other person's ready to fulfill it, they'll, you just check, tick it off. And if they're not ready, then if that's they're fine. not ready, they're not ready, but at least they know what you expect. Yeah. So I think that's number that was one. Very, that was very useful. Yeah. And number two is, that I, I swear, I, I need to fix something in the community. <laughs> like, I need to get people to start talking about it. Maybe yeah. not guys, but at least, at least I, I, the I women, find, I think they go through I find more. Uh, we should be able to talk about it because it, it is your child, right? And, uh, I mean, you would talk about any child. Even, even when we're having a, I don't know, get together or something, like, you she should be able to talk about your child regardless of how long they lived yeah yeah it's to me it's just for people to be able to feel comfortable, as comfortable to, to share their information and, and what surprised me was the aunties that had the same yeah oh my god there's so many people that went that through this experience that have never spoken process. about it i'm like i can't believe this and because i shared they were able to share with me and actually openly share like i had so many aunties crying so loud like in front of me because they missed their their baby so it it, it was it was eye-opening for sure and um and again it's not like it's you know you got to hold your baby there are there are there are parents who are parents lost, um at times where there's not there is really nothing to hold and they still grieve and and they may not even have another baby that they can um have to hold right and yeah so, so it's it is hard it is it is one of the hardest um tests right oh 100 so i i can't imagine and that's that's where we felt you know like where you feel some gratitude like where i feel gratitude some is there's parents that have lost grown children right like how many memories yes. how many things do you have attached to that and like i think that would destroy me maybe that's what god was saving me from something Right, like I, I can't imagine. Like I've seen smiles off my popo's faces. Uh, her khala, like her, like they, they've lost grown children, right? So I, I don't know what that. Yeah, you know, I, I, like I don't know, I don't know. Like I, I'm attaching. Maybe part of me not wanting to go into that room is because I, I, I don't have memories of it. Right now, I do have something ingrained in my head. Right, I felt what her skin felt like. I felt what she felt like. So, I didn't want that. So when I look at it, maybe. For the other parents, I'm like, I can't imagine what that goes through. And I and a lot of them don't talk about it. And like I don't talk about my cousin that much. My 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 both of them hardly bring her up unless it's like, you know, but I'm like they must want to, right? They of course. you know the memories. So I feel that. Yeah. yeah. It's it's the shift was to for me at least. Um I no longer practice gratitude. I live in gratitude. Oh my god. Yeah. Yep. Every moment. Every moment. Every moment. Every breath. Right? It it really gives you perspective on gratitude. Oh, yeah. 100%. I mean I can say I can say gratitude all I want, but like you said, living it every single moment and every single breath with yeah. you know is 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 our point of connection, right? Hundred percent. We're always looking for the next thing. We never stop the like, and, and, and some people do it better than others, right? I guess when you're reading them out, like that's the whole purpose is to slow something down, right? And for you to, to be thankful for things. So some people do it better than others, but I'm like, you're so caught up in the routine and like, you know, of just day to day and then trying to give your kids the best of, of everything you didn't have. And then I, like, you know, you just keep going through that. You don't stop to think, oh my God, thank you for the food. Thank you for I mean, having a job. Thank you for having a roof over your head. You're us always looking for the next thing. Yeah. And you can say thank you all you want, but you know, when it comes from here. Yeah, you're right. It has a different, like sometimes you don't even need to say the words from your, no. like you literally don't have to say it, but that one breath that you take that just sends out this whole energy of gratitude reaches far and beyond. I, that's for me. Yeah, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Before, like for me, praying was like such a tick mark. Yeah. And even now part of it is, right? But I feel like, like imagine how, how our days are broken up is take time. Take yeah. just take that time and just regroup and center yourself and ground yourself again, right? Agreed. Absolutely. Agreed.
<sighs> so many lessons to be learned. Yeah. But this was, this was so good. Thank you so much. I like, I am sure that this is going to help a lot of people. And, yeah. and I think that you've opened up person, you, I guess, you know, by talking, you maybe probably open doors for people to come and talk to you and, and, you know, kind of lean on you because they can see how brave you're being. And for you, Abiha, too, like, you know, everything that you both have shared right now is, you know, it's, it's remarkable. And, and it is a true testament of your, your submission and um, having that knowledge of intention mm -hmm. um, and understanding that. And, and I think that is remarkable. So we'll just take a short moment of silence for Jenna. Sure. sure. Thank you. So I'll, I'll, you know, I'm going to share this with everyone. And thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. I think this thank is really so good. If the yes. more this gets out there, the better. It is. Yeah. So be prepared. You might get some messages. I, <laughs> <We're> <laughs> um, I will definitely share your beautiful blog about Jenna. Um, and I'm sure that that will help a lot of people as well. Absolutely. And yeah. thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you very much. Okay. Thank you, Zara. Take care. Stop it.